One day I just followed a link and I read Pompeii disease and I froze. We were reading things on the internet and it looked like I was going to be in a wheelchair and on a ventilator and die of respiratory failure with, within five years. I wasn't going to be there for my husband and I wasn't going to see grandchildren. So the actual diagnosis for me was such a relief. Sitting in that doctor's appointment and she said verbatim, blow me down with a feather, you have Pompeii disease. And she actually seemed a little bit excited. She said um, that of all the things it could have been, Pompeii was great because it's got a treatment, so that there was something that we could do. So Pompeii disease is a lysosomal storage disorder that affects the muscles. The disease basically is a deficiency or complete lack of an enzyme that breaks down sugar. Once that cell is full of sugar and our body can't clear the sugar from that cell, the cell expands and is destroyed. So the damage um, that I experienced to my muscles trying to find a diagnosis that will never be reversed. So hard to spot, so hard to spot a Pompeii patient because within the Pompeii spectrum, we don't all look the same. There's no typical presentation of Pompeii disease. So um, all of my weird and wonderful symptoms over the years looking back, all of them were Pompeii disease. Treatment for Pompeii disease is a infusion fortnightly, intravenously in a hospital setting. You can have a fantastic life living with Pompeii disease. It's doable, it's not a terminal diagnosis. We have a choice of treatments here in Australia now, which is fantastic. And what treatment looks like is changing. To have the option to do home infusions and take treatment out of a hospital setting and into our home where we can sit down and have our dog on our laps while we're having treatment, amazing. One of the big reasons that I joined the Australian Pompeii Association is I think patient advocacy is really important to help identify those gaps that our members are going to fall through and help to close some of those gaps and being able to give them really good quality information rather than the scary, outdated stuff that's floating around on the internet. It's really important. When I was first diagnosed with Pompeii disease, I had decided life as you know it isn't over, it just looks a little different and that's okay. It's not perfect, we've still got our challenges, but there's workarounds and you can, with a little bit of thought, you can do the things that you want to do. A great day for me is spending time cooking in my kitchen with my dog at my feet, brushing a horse, that lovely smell only a horse has where nothing in the world is wrong. It's just my little escape um, down at the stable. Despite not working in the winery any longer, um, I still enjoy visiting. I love nothing more than gathering around a table with them and having a glass of wine and enjoying just vistas over the vineyard, just great companionship, friendship, which you need in spades with a disease like this and spending lots and lots of lovely quality time with my beautiful grandson. Living with Pompeii is possible and you can live well with Pompeii disease.